Welcome back. Well, the biggest news of the year from the Rebel News point of view, and I think indeed it would be hard to dispute it, was the trucker convoy in January and February. It shook the country and it shook the world. For the first time in my lifetime, everyone around the world was focused on Canada, genuinely curious about what was happening. In fact, I think there was an admiration that the truckers, blue collar, ordinary folks without any backing of a political party or any political action group, they rose up and they helped free Canadians from the vaccine mandates and other lockdowns. It was wonderful. That was Rebel News's Time to Shine. And there was an echo to that uh, fairly recently with the Trucker Commission of Inquiry when uh, Justin Trudeau was asked to justify his decision to put the country into form of martial law. Now, I don't think that that Trudeau actually justified it. I think it was crystal clear by the end of the commission that he, in fact, didn't have the legal basis for it, but he put forward his political case. Uh, that was an important project for Rebel News. As you know, we booked a Airbnb for a pop-up studio. Uh, we, we rented a house near the Commission of Inquiry. We had four bedrooms there. Rebel journalists rotated through there. We turned the kitchen into a studio. We live tweeted it. We live blogged it. We had live streaming. And one of our favorite guests was our guest today, Eva Chipiuk, who is here to give us a recap, not just of, you know, the trucker battles in general, but what's been going on the last two weeks. Because although the, the legal hearings you know, examining the prime minister, et cetera. They were over a couple of weeks ago. There has been some other work going on. And joining us now via Skype from Edmonton is Eva Chipiak. Eva, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Nice to see you as well. You know, you were a real staple of our coverage from the Trucker Commission. Um, and I thank you for that. And it was sort of fun to, uh, for us to have this outpost in Ottawa, pretty close to the place where the commission was hearing, I felt like we were really on the front lines. It also felt good that we were fully accredited media because Justin Trudeau doesn't allow that. And so it was great to get full access right in the room to be treated just like the other journalists. And indeed, we were just like the other journalists, except for I think we were a little more balanced and we put a lot of people power into it. Anyways, um, Eva, can you tell us what has been happening since the, I guess, the crescendo of having Christia Freeland, Marco Mendocino, and Justin Trudeau testify. So we know about that. And, then, and after that, we sort of wound down our Ottawa coverage. But the Commission of Inquiry isn't actually done, are they? Tell us what they've been up to these last couple of weeks. Yeah, of course. So um, after the factual basis ended with Justin Trudeau, as you said, highlighting everything at the end there, um, the next week following was a policy discussion phase. So there were various academics and different professionals that were giving their opining on, for example, the CSIS Act and the definition of national security threat which as we know from what went on at the inquiry, that turned into be quite a um, question about whether or not the Emergencies Act was properly invoked and turned into whether or not that legal definition was met. So there was a round table discussion about that with a former CSIS director. There was also a round table about misinformation and disinformation. Mm. Um, so that would have been particularly interesting, I think to yourselves and um, your audience, because as, as we know, we there's a lot of that going on right now in Canada. Same with police authority. So there was a full week of um, policy discussions. And some of these academics and different directors were giving their opinion of what should be or what shouldn't be in the Emergencies Act and what the commission ought to do, provide the government as a recommendation. So that's all interesting, and it sounds like important discussions, but it sounds like they are sort of general academic discussions as opposed to retrospectively examining Trudeau's invocation of it. Am I right? So this is more the academics weigh in and say, well, we should do that, or here's a problem, So it, it, as opposed to specifically holding Trudeau to account. Is that a correct uh, characterization? You know, that even came up in one of the policy discussions is somebody, and I can't recall which debate it was, but they said, you know, the worst thing is this is giving academics work. And the other thing that I found a bit troubling is 
some of these academics that were invited to speak after six long weeks of evidence was given were still using the same language as MSM was providing before the inquiry. So all this, um, the narrative that was being spun was still being used by these academics, like they haven't learned anything in the last six weeks. So that was a bit troubling. And certainly, yes, it was a bit more, in some respects, some were a bit more uh, kind of hands on with the evidence and some people were a bit more high level. That's an excerpt from my show every night. It's called The Ezra Levant Show. That's me, Ezra Levant. Uh, you can see the whole thing behind our paywall. Well, there's a lot of goodies behind there. I do a show every weeknight. My friends Sheila Gunn-Reed and David Menzies and Nat and Kat have their shows too. You get a ton of content for just eight bucks a month. There's so much in there you won't find anywhere else. Go to rebelnewsplus.com.